Hey guys, Brent Old Build Show, talking today about design, how to fix a 1980s mess up on that Italian Revival house that we're working on here in Fort Worth, a beautiful, awesome house, needing to make the backside as good as the front side. Come join me today in the Build Show. You know, what's wrong with this picture? So th this house is an amazing Italian revival house and it's beautiful and wonderful, but on the back side of it, they've done a lot of fixes over the years that just aren't effective. And I'm gonna show you some of the classical detailing that I, that I want you guys to learn and want you guys to figure out because it does make things better when you do it. Now, you might look at the back of this porch and go, oh, that's kind of nice. But there's some subtle things that I'm gonna show you that I think make this much better one is, if you don't know about the architectural orders, try not to use, the rule of thumb would be, try not to use the Corinthian order, okay? The Corinthian order is the highest order, or composite and Corinthian are the highest orders, and that means that the hierarchy, the ornamentation, the detailing, it's not appropriate for everything, okay? The second thing is, is that the relationship of the base, it comes from a tradition of tectonics, in other words, how something was built. And so it was built to be practical. It was built to make sense. So the problem is, is that the pedestal here, okay, should be over top of this. It sitting out here, this weight of this thing sitting between this, this span, okay, doesn't make sense visually to our eyes. It confuses and makes you go, hmm, you know, shouldn't the weight be supported by, by something? It can't just hang out there in midair. So the relationship of this whole balustrade should relate to what's going on down here. Now, there's some technical things that are going on, like this entablature isn't right, and you don't have a breakout over top of a column like this, and the height of this balustrade, you'll hear me talk about the heights of chariots, is too tall. And so there, there are things that just, you know, don't work. So now that you see it, you go, oh yeah, that's not as good. And so what I did was I went in and kind of fixed those things, okay? Simplify these columns to be just a simple Tuscan or Doric column. I've increased the width of this entablature. And most importantly, I've got, you know, these pedestal pieces over top of the columns so that the visual weight, okay, on this balustrade is supported by what's underneath. So, you know, if we go back to this, this, you know, entablature even is a little bit weak, whereas the one that I've done, you know, I've increased the size of it, right? So that it feels like this beam that's running across here between these columns appears to carry, you know, the weight that's above it more easily. So, the whole system, the whole classical system is meant to make sense. It's meant to be visually make you feel comfortable, visually make you feel, oh yeah, that makes sense. There's just a real quick way of thinking about the balustrade. What's more important is, is this detail up here. And uh, let me show you how we're going to fix it here. But this was added at a later date and was not original. And I'll show you some original pictures as we dig into this house. But this rotunda piece here, had no top on it, okay? And so this top was added, you know, at some point by some builder or architect. And the problem is, is that this is, you know, obviously a column, okay? But the way it engages this capital isn't right, okay? This capital, because it overhangs this by about a foot, appears cumbersome and large. And because they didn't understand the classical system, in, instead of putting an entablature up here, they just kind of built this panelized system, right? Whether that's because that was easier, because it was a cost savings thing. My column now is, a, is just one big panel and a little panel at the top, okay? And then this, you know, is there's a separate panel over top of that column and then a bigger panel in the middle and then a bunch of moldings up here, okay? Now, what should happen, okay, is that there should be a whole system, okay, for how this base is supporting this column and then supports that entablature. So we've got three parts. We've got a base, right? We've got the, 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 the columns, and then we've got the entablature at the top. And so how should that system work? Well, 
it, it should work like this, okay? There's a couple different ways to do it. Historically, there was what was called rustication, okay? And rustication is heavy, big blocks, okay, that visually would support, you know, the weight that's being carried over top. So this rustication would make you feel like that base is really strong, and then naturally it can hold the columns there's balustrades, and then there's, there is an entablature up here where you can see my little sketches. It goes up to an architrave, there's a frieze, there's a cornice, and then there's this balustrade at the top, okay? And so that's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is you actually have these vaults below, okay? So these arches. And the arches, right, are visually this pier becomes very strong and naturally our weight is driven right up through that, that circle because you've got an opening between it. It makes it light and airy, but you will see it classically done this way. So we've got arches, you know, very strong base, you know, and then the, the same kind of architectural system above. What they have is they have this brick base, the rotunda and the original, this column that goes up, you can see how it kicks out and then there's trim at the top, okay? Now, compare these different systems being architecturally correct. So, you know, one of the reasons I encourage you guys to understand the classical system, and I got videos on it, is because understanding how to do this, this is what makes us into master builders. And so our proposal in this rotunda fix that we're working on here for this client comes from and is all based on this classical system. So one solution, right, was the rustication. And so in this rustication, we've now changed the brick base to, and you, you could do this with plaster, you could do this with a number of different things, but I've got large stones I've implied here so that these windows sit inside this these large stone base, but it, it visually carries what's going on over top. Rustication kind of is one way of doing that. The other way is with arches. And so this is, this is the other side showing kind of how that looks. And then with the arches in there showing how that works, right? And so this is me sketching on top of and sketching over top of a picture, but helping the client visualize and understand how this thing goes together. So there's the arch version, right? There's that version showing that, that these columns are supported on these arches, right? And that we've got an entablature above and then an attic or a balustrade above that, you know, that, that hides this equipment that's actually up, up on top here, you know, and then it was this pay, the, this rustication piece here, right? Which is that kind of that last slide there, which kind of shows making this base strong so that it can support and carry there. But really the fix on this thing for us on this thing is fixing, you know, this panelized stucco, thick, fat, kind of system with what's architecturally beautiful, architecturally works, architecturally comes from great tradition. Okay guys, what'd you think? Make some changes using those classical details. Hopefully when you see it drawn out and kind of figured out, it helps you visualize some of these things I've been saying about the classical system. It really is the key to building beautiful and building well. So let me know what you think. If you like this stuff, if you follow us on Patreon, we've got the Passion for Craft podcast. We've got a Patreon page and every Tuesday I'm dropping curated sections of my library to give you guys access to great things that you need to collect for your library so you can raise your game, become a master builder. I'm Brent Hull. Thanks for watching.